I was on Twitter a little while back now, and I came across this post by this guy named Shane, who had a Game Boy development board, which is something I've been searching for for a long time, because I'm making a Game Boy game, which I'll make a video about that soon. But it's something that, uh, it's a type of board that um, they used back in the day to actually test and program their their cart Game Boy cartridges to like in a testing environment when they were making a game. And I just thought it would be really fun and interesting to uh, actually have one to test for my actual game. Like it's not necessary anymore to, to use that to make a game. Um, and it's actually more difficult now, nowadays, because there's way better technology like RGBDS and GBDK and other things. But anyway, um, uh, let's go ahead and uh, here's the box that it came in. Um, yeah, let me clear a little bit of space here. Okay. That's a bit more space. Here is the box that he sent me. And I've already opened it, but here is the board, which, let me just move this. Here's the board, and here is a special controller that just has some of these uh, connectors on it that connect to the board. Uh, here's a game for it, and a power supply. The rest was all just uh, packaging. So this actually uses a Super Famicom controller and even a Super Famicom uh, power adapter, which doesn't necessarily have to be this exact one as long as it has the same size connector and uh, you know all the, the voltage and everything is comp compatible. Um, so the game he sent me, which is kind of significant, this is Lego Bionicle maze of shadows and i'll tell you why that's significant in a minute here but here is the board and shane was incredibly nice he said if i wanted to i could completely remove the components do whatever i want to it so i am just borrowing it from him so i'm trying to be as careful as i can but um let's get this set up and i'll show you let's see here So the controller plugs in here. And let me turn this light off. Uh, is that too dark? Uh, hold on one second. I think that's okay. Okay, so let me get a close-up of the board here. Basically, it's this is a Game Boy Advance that's been kind of spread out over this entire board to allow for some additional ports and things to kind of debug a game that you're working on. And if you look right here, let me see how close I can get. Yeah, if you look right here, you can see that it says CGB and there's a little arrow to AGB. So there, was, there, should, there should be a little switch right here to switch between Game Boy Color mode and Game Boy Advance mode. Unfortunately, uh, this is a, I believe it's called a TS2 model and this specific one does not have the Game Boy Color functionality so even if I were to attach a switch here or jump it or whatever it needs to do to switch to that mode um, it wouldn't work because the actual code on whatever chip um, is just not there and so this I think only has support for some Game Boy Advance games. Now I don't know if this is the actual game that whoever owned this, like the development team that was working on. I don't know if this is one of the games that they were working on, but out of all of the, the different uh, Game Boy Advance games I have, this is one of the few that actually works or doesn't have uh, like issues. So unfortunately, this is not a backlit screen. This is an original Game Boy Advance screen. It looks like a 40 pin. Um, but yeah, so let's go ahead and power this on. So, let's 
plugged in, has this giant power switch. Uh, something that's kind of interesting is that when you turn it on, it kind of has a slightly different tone than your normal uh, Game Boy Advance. So here's the speaker. I'll just uh, put the lav mic a little bit closer so you can hear it. So here it is. So it's kind of quiet. Who knows, these uh, capacitors might need to be replaced. But I'll play it one more time, holding it a little bit closer to the microphone. Yeah, so it kind of, it's a little bit different. And I noticed the, um, this little like, the part that's supposed to say Nintendo down here is very different. And when you put in a game, I'll try this game. Still has that same interesting sound. Hopefully you guys can see the screen okay. And there's English and German. But it's pretty interesting, you can play, play the game. I've never actually played this game. But you can play with... Try battle mode, I don't know what this is. So I have no idea, no idea what I'm doing with this game. But um, you can also use these little buttons here. Anyway, let's, uh, let's try a different game and I'll show you what happens. Let's see here. This is another project I have going on. And another project. <laughs> I don't have very many Game Boy Advance games. I think that's a bootleg one. We can try it. Uh, there's a Love Hina game. Another Love Hina. I think that's the translated one. I had Advance Wars. Or I have Advance Wars. Pokemon Pinball, there we go, or something. Mario Pinball Land. Winx, Danny Phantom. Here we go. Advance Wars 2, at least. I have one somewhere, too. But that's some good to, good to start with. So I've tried this one before, and I know that it kind of works. So I'll show you. So you can see the background has some weird like effects and certain effects and things in the game. There's all these like weird lines and probably something to do with like the VRAM or the way that it, actually I have no idea, I don't know, but interesting the way that it looks. And I guess the game is playable, I guess I didn't really try playing it. Um, just picking some random people. So yeah, I guess it's mostly playable. It's really hard to see. 
I really can't tell what's a building or what's a tree. But here, I should get a really good close up here. So something's just uh, not compatible here. Now uh, let's see if any other game works. Pokemon Pinball. So far it's not detecting this cartridge. Could just be dirty. There we go, Nintendo. So far, this one looks pretty good. It's a little bit hard to play with these little buttons here. But yeah, this game looks like it works just fine. So that's kind of interesting. Okay, let's see what else we got. Now I'm pretty sure Super Mario Advance is a bootleg game. Yeah, this is a bootleg. So let's try that and see what it does. Looks like it read the cartridge okay. And it looks like it's working just fine. I mean, it's essentially just a Game Boy Advance, just with uh, not as finalized code in like the production models, I assume. But wow, this game actually looks okay. I guess maybe only Advance Wars so far hasn't hasn't worked too well. Um, let's try one more. This is my translation of Love Hina, English translation. Love Hina is one of my favorite animes. So I have a bunch of Lafina stuff in my collection. And it detected the card okay. So it's playing the video pretty well. I don't see any errors. Maybe Advanced Wars just uses some kind of uh, effects or something in the code that Pretty impressive little video. Okay, anyway. So that is a look at this board. Um, what else can we look at here? Um, here's the back side of it. Not much to it, but there you go. And link port. Some kind of like, looks like an IDE port or something. Um, it says AGB2812. Yeah, I posted this about, I posted about this on the Game Boy Discord in a couple places and um, a couple people asked me to uh, dump the BIOS on the CPU, but unfortunately, I guess uh, this one has already been, been dumped. Not this maybe not this specific one, but this uh, TS2. So it's already out there. So it's not anything that hasn't been seen before. I think there's a couple different models that haven't been ever located in the wild before. But yeah, this is what they used to make Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games back in the day. There was like a whole separate, like a big blocky unit that had like a cartridge with a bunch of wires like coming out. And that's what allowed you to actually flash cartridges and stuff, I think, or something. I'm not exactly sure, but I know that these boards only use an older assembler. I can't even remember what it's called, but the newer assembler is called RGBDS. 
which a lot of Game Boy, like official Game Boy games were even made with that, but um, the earlier ones were made with something earlier. Um, Game Boy Advance uses something different, but um, yeah, it's pretty neat to see. Some people joked, because I posted about this on a couple different places and stuff, and, I, and uh, some people joked that I should make a giant like 3D printed case to make it look like a like a Game Boy and use these buttons or something, but yeah, I, uh, I gotta get this back to its actual owner, so don't really have time for that, but kind of a funny idea. So yeah, I just uh, wanted to show, like share this with you guys. Kind of neat to actually have it in my hands here. That interesting piece of history. So I guess that's it for now, it's for this one. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions about this. And I'll do my best to answer them in the comments. All right. Um, hope everybody is doing well out there. I know it's a pretty interesting, difficult time right now. So, so yeah, um, I'll see you guys pretty soon.